Hi everyone, this is Amr Agul, corneal and laser eye surgeon based out of Calgary, Alberta. And today I want to talk about the artificial iris. You may have seen videos and websites talking about people changing their eye color. I get questions about that all the time. I'm going to talk to you about my experience with dealing with artificial irises. So you may wonder, can you really change your iris color? You may be seeing things on the internet that talks about that. You may even see video testimonial of patients who went ahead and did that. So today I want to talk to you about my experience with artificial irises and why you should be careful about what you watch and read on the internet. Okay, so the concept of an artificial iris is basically changing someone's eye color. The iris is a muscle that's basically in front of the lens in our eye and it's meant to get small and big to accommodate for light coming in and to allow us to focus on objects. And so some people like to change that color that they were born with and there are places in the world that are currently offering that. But the problem with it is the artificial irises that are currently available are not truly FDA approved or Health Canada approved and as such there are a lot of uncertainties as to the longevity of them being in someone's eye. So I got referred a few years ago to see a patient from a colleague of mine. Um, the patient went ahead and did artificial irises somewhere in the world. I'm not going to say where he went. Um, and he was hoping to change his iris color from brown to blue. And it did. It actually worked really well for probably about um, like four years. And he was extremely happy with it. But then things started changing and he was starting to notice his vision getting really blurry and what was happening was the cornea, which is the clear part of the eye in front of the color part of the eye, the iris, was getting damaged by that artificial iris that was in his eye. It was actually rubbing on the cells on the inner layer, causing that tissue to swell up. Normally the coil thickness, that layer is about half a millimeter, half a millimeter thick, it was starting to get about 0.7 to almost getting to be a millimeter thick and that's not good news at all. So he came to me because my colleague went ahead and took out the artificial iris in one of his eyes but he wanted specifically a type of advanced corneal transplantation called DMAC where we just strip the layer of those endothelial cells that are making the cornea stay clear and replace it with the donor endothelial cells and in other words basically a very, very, very unique type of corneal transplantation technique. And so I went ahead and did it for his eye that had the artificial iris removed. He did really well there. But then his other eye that had artificial iris also started to fail, the cornea that is. So in this video that we're going to show, we basically went ahead and took out that artificial iris and I was hoping that by just removing the artificial iris it'd be enough, but unfortunately it wasn't. And I had to do DMAC surgery. And so we ended up doing this DMAC surgery, this modified transplantation in both of his eyes. About a month out, he actually was phenomenally well. His vision was about 20-20, believe it or not. Um, but then things took a turn for the worse. He started noticing that the pressure was going high. He noticed that the vision is getting blurry and the corneal transplants that we put in, even though they were very, very, very fine, were starting to fail. So I had to go back and actually do um, DSAC surgery, which is another type of corneal transplantation. By now you're thinking we love our jargons and we certainly do as doctors. Um, and so we went ahead and did that and he actually did need some glaucoma surgery as well by a colleague of mine to keep the pressure under control. I'm thankful to say that he's finally under control now. Everything is settled down. Um, but if you ask him, would he do that again? I am betting he would say no. And so I would really caution you guys about what you watch and read about the artificial irises. There are certain indications where artificial irises are beneficial, but it's specific types in very specific circumstances. The idea of going ahead and changing your iris color isn't quite there yet. And that's the opinion of most surgeons in North America in that if you are doing that sort of thing, there's a high likelihood that you could run into causing damage to the natural iris in your eye. There's a probability of damage to the cornea, like what happened to my patient, or there's a possibility you can get really high pressures leading to irreversible uh, optic nerve damage 
and eventual blindness. So I would caution everyone to uh, be careful of what they're reading and watching on the internet regarding artificial irises and to please um, reach out to your own eye doctor to get advice about that. Thank you for watching. That's it for me today.